Alright, so today we're going to kind of go over like once we started farming, something called, it's called the uh, Neolithic Revolution. So, I don't know if you guys know anything about farming, but because I really don't know much about it. But, so, what's some, can anybody tell me like some plants that we, you good? Uh, can anybody tell me what like some plants that we helped to be what they are today? Like something we've cultivated. Watermelon. Yes. Watermelon, okay. okay. Have you ever seen the original pictures of watermelon? Well, it's literally just like a bunch of seeds. Like like a, yeah, it looks like a little grape. And now it's like this big. Yeah, they used to be like this big. Uh, something like that big. Yeah, they used to be tiny, tiny, tiny. What else? Anybody else got any other things we cultivated and changed? Corn. Corn, yeah. Corn used to look like basically wheat, just a little bit fatter. And now it's like that long and has a bunch of stuff all over it. Uh, anybody can think of any animals that we've domesticated? Dogs, anything else? Cats, that's a good one. Uh, what about like um, cattle? We have horses. Um, you know, we've domesticated a lot of things at the time. And that's what we're gonna kind of go into today. We're gonna kind of go into this uh, domestication of not just uh, animals, we're also gonna go cultivation of crops or where we started learning how to plant crops and how to uh, start settling down in like small groups, like villages and stuff like that. So we're gonna start with that kind of today. Let me get to that. Mm -hmm. All right, so before this, like as we said, most of uh, what we did as um, a group was hunting, gathering, kind of we moved around with our food. Um, there's, have you guys ever seen those, uh, those videos or any, like seen a video about um, like gatherers like walking around and like grabbing things like berries and they have a big basket or there's people out hunting you know, with their spears and everything. So you have that. There's always, it's always been a, of course, that's just. <laughs> there we go so yeah that's that's kind of like what we're going to be going in today so i'm gonna have you guys you guys get a choice of which video you guys want all right i'll, I'll give you guys this choice i personally hate crash course but if you guys want to do crash course we can watch crash course or you can do this one right here huh what do you guys want crash, top one I uh, will do this one then, because I can't stand Crash Course. Online presence makes an impression. Make sure your words are as professional as you. Slides then, please. All right, so we'll watch this. It's kind of like the development of agriculture to give you a general idea before we go into everything. The prehistoric man lived for millions of years as a nomad. His community survived by hunting and collecting fruit and roots. That is why men lived in constant migrations in search of food. A revolution was about to start, which would forever change his old way of life. This revolution happened with the mastery of agricultural techniques. Man learned how to sell the land and reap the fruit of his work. This new habit allowed man to gradually settle down on his piece of land, leaving his nomadic ways behind. The first villages began to emerge near the floodplains of the rivers, as these were the most fertile land. Since most places where man settled down were not adequate to grow food throughout the year, 
man began to give preference to the cultivation of cereals, which, besides their nutritional value, could be stored for longer periods. However, some of these cereals were often attacked by pests and rodents. During that same historical period, man developed the ability to domesticate animals as well. The dog was one of the first to be domesticated, as it would be used as a working animal, helping to safeguard communities while engaging in hunting and livestock-related activities. Some basic requirements had to be fulfilled before an animal could be considered domesticated. They could not compete with humans for food. Therefore, animals that fed on grazing or leftovers would be the ideal option. Ideally, these animals could not feel panic easily. However, if that was not possible, they would have to behave like a pack when frightened. By forming large groups, they would be more easily controlled by their owners and their herding dogs. These animals were domesticated in order to provide food for men, having also to reach their adulthood rapidly, thus increasing their productivity. Both agriculture and livestock serve other purposes besides food. The animal's leather was used for several different purposes, both for clothing and the production of other items. And animals, like sheep, besides providing meat and milk, also supplied their wool. Vegetables, like flax and cotton, were also grown to serve as fabric. These small villages started to produce surpluses, trading, and exchanging their products with other villages. Commerce began to slowly emerge, getting increasingly common over time. The mastery of these technologies created the basic conditions for the emergence of the first cities. All right. All right, so I'm gonna ask you guys a few questions from the video to kind of see what our understanding of this is. Why is it that we wanted to domesticate animals that we didn't compete with, that wouldn't compete with us for food? Okay. Okay. Okay, good, good. What about uh, when they said that they don't need to be easily scared? Um, so why don't we domesticate deer? Okay. So, so since they're scared, they're not going to be what a bias. They're not going to want to be near us and stuff. Okay, that's that's good. That's good. Um, and then, uh, why were dogs so important for? I mean, just think about it. Why were dogs so important for? Um, like one of our first domestication was dogs. Um, why is that so important? Huh? Hunting. Yes. What else? Protection. Good. Good. There's one other thing. It's 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 pretty simple. We have it still today. Huh? Herding. herding. Okay. Well, actually, I didn't even think about that. Yes, herding. Yeah. And companionship. You know. You know. That's hunting, herding, companionship, protection. And uh, the reason why dogs were so easy to domesticate is that they already have a hierarchy in their like a pack system. And so we just replace the top. That's why your dog respects you and does what you say because you're considered the top dog or the you're over them in the hierarchy of their pack. And so that's kind of a kind of an interesting way that happens. Why would why do you guys think like villages and cities would settle around farming? Give you guys a little bit of thinking. So like you instead of walking around and hunting all the time, you have people staying in one area and farming. Why is that? Okay, it's easier, it's closer, okay. You think it has anything to do with like a surplus of food? Like you have the ability to stay in one place, you know? Um, okay, so you have to protect your crops, yeah, and tend to them, all right. Why do you think um, humans settled by rivers, mostly? Water source, there's a few things that come along with rivers. There's a water source, yes. Food, yes. Fertile land, huh? Bath. I, that's not that's not a bad one. Uh, transportation is also one of them. Um, we it did get into trading, which we'll get into more once like we talk about the actual creation of civilization and like the early civilizations. But that's that's very good. That's I mean that's some of the things.
that are very important in this topic. So tools needed to survive. So when, what were the tools we needed to survive in the old stone age? What did we use? Did we use plows and pickaxes and stuff? Or did we use like stone spears and bow and arrows and stuff like that? Because we didn't need to create structures. We didn't need to um, plow fields and stuff like that. I don't know if they had plows yet, but anyways. We hunted animals and we collected food. We were hunter-gatherers instead of um, stationary and did nothing uh, and just farmed or started developing different like techniques. Um, so that's something that's like you need these things to survive in the Paleolithic uh, era because we weren't settling down. We weren't farming. So we need spears more than we need plows. We need um, bone arrows more than we need um, musical instruments. So stuff like that. All right, and then uh, during this earlier Paleolithic, like we talked about earlier, there was jewelry. Um, uh, there was cave paintings, which we talked about, animal sculptures, rock engraving and paintings. Um, they had jewelries and seashells, lion's teeth, bear claws, and then polished beads from mer uh, not mer mammoth tusk. Uh, also, they uh, would use wood. They'd create wood sculptures or rock sculptures to signify deities, gods, um, things like that, things of a religious origin. So the Neolithic Revolution, what it's called, it's, uh, its other name is the Agricultural Revolution. It began about 10,000 years ago. This is when we first developed the uh, crops. And the, um, it says that nomadic women would scatter seeds and then discover crops growing. So they would, you know, uh, when you're nomadic, you follow hunting, like hunt um, packs of animals because you're hunting. And so these packs would return to these areas where they would spread seeds and there'd be, uh, be some type of growth of some plant, usually cereal is what they were thinking, cereal, squash, stuff like that. And then they would come back and then they eventually found out that this was actually a better source of food and it would uh, lead to a, a surplus of food so they wouldn't have to travel as much. And so they started settling down in these smaller groups. Um, some other ideas that they think of is uh, rising temperatures was a, probably a key reason because if it's cold all the time, the ice age was receding. So rising temperatures allow for plants to grow instead of um, constantly being frost that kills them off. Uh, longer gr uh, growing seasons and drier land for wild grasses. And then constant supply of food uh, led to population growth from that. So if you have, if you're constantly hunting and you have just a bare minimum amount of food to survive, are you gonna be able to grow a population? No. And so if you have a ton of food, do you think you're going to have a, a large population boom? So there's the reason we went from very little people to we're at a 7 billion right now, right? Like almost 8 billion. I think it's something that very, so we have a surplus of food because of farming. Well, some places don't, but in a general sense, we have a lot more food than they used to. The beginnings. So the first thing we used to do, I don't know if you guys know what slash and burn techniques are. So basically what this is, is they would go into a forest or like a glassland. They would cut it down, burn it. What that does, that releases more nutrients into the soil, and then they would plant on top of it. And then they would move to allow it to regrow, grow back to its natural form. They'd move pastures or forest, cut that down, burn it, and repeat the process, and just keep moving so it can keep regrowing. This is still a method that's used today in certain areas of the world. Um, it's nothing, it's old, old, but they still use it. It's something that's still done today. So domestication of animals, we talked about this a little bit. So like horses, goats, dogs, pigs, uh, sheep, um, cats were later on, but the cats, there's a bunch of different uh, animals we domesticated. Also, um, we domesticated um, animals of burden, like oxen, horses, things that would carry our, um, our goods, um, pull plows, pull everything. And so this helped us increase our civilization because we had a transportation of knowledge, goods, services, stuff like that. And so uh, the agriculture in, I think it's Jamaro or Homaro, I'm not 100% sure. So this is one of the, uh, thought to be one of the first sites for um, agriculture. It was in Northeast Iraq, which is in, um, what would have been in Middle East, it's like Turkey. I don't know if you guys know what Iraq is, but it's in the Middle East. It's uh, between the Tigris and Euphrates River. And uh, it's a big river valley that has a lot of, um, has a lot of flooding. And so they have a lot of um, fertilization. It's like, that's what we consider the uh, fertile crescent. 
And then so they, you know, wild grasses, this would have been like your cereals. I don't know if you can show that. You can. Yep. So most of y'all, if you guys, because have you ever heard that song, I guess Toby Keith, uh, don't know the difference between our rock and our ran. It goes back and forth. I'm kind of knowing. This Middle Eastern stuff is very big. You guys probably should have learned it last year based upon uh, world geography. But if you start off where the United States is, uh, so we're here, and then we fly across the Atlantic, go across Africa, and that's what's known as like the Middle East right there. Okay, so Saudi Arabia, uh, and then you got Iraq and Iran, and then again, the Fertile Crescent of Mesopotamia. The difference how to tell it between the two is, one is a small dry area, uh, the other, I'm sorry, small fertile area with your Tigris and Euphrates winding off, okay? And the other one is gonna have a large dry area. So uh, Iran's gonna be, as far as your, your bigger one, Iraq's the major one right there, uh, with your split and your fertile crescent. Let's Syria, see. so like the, the big region in this time period would have been Iraq, Syria, and parts of Turkey, which is right here. Syria, right there. That's would have been, because uh, that, that's where the Tigris and Euphrates rivers are. And that would have been a, a great source of uh, fertilization. All right, and then so wild grasses would be like our cereal grasses, like wheat, barley, stuff like that. All right, um, and so farming developed differently across the world. Um, and they developed different crops, different things to grow. And so we have um, Kalatusk, I can't say that. Uh, farming started for about a thousand years, located in modern Turkey. So I, uh, I did mention Turkey a second ago. Population was about five to 6,000 uh, grew crops, raised sheep and cattle. They made pottery, they wove baskets, they had trading, uh, valuable obsidian. Anybody know what obsidian is? Yeah? What do you make, what do you make out of obsidian? Arrowheads, yeah. What else? Spears, jewelry. It's a bunch of different. It's a volcanic glass, so it has a lot of it had a lot of functions. They used it for knives. They used it for um, lots of different things. Um, in 1958, remaining uh, they actually found village remains in uh, like wall paintings and like religious shrines. Um, can anybody tell me a crop that was created in Mexico and Central America? It's like a big one. You learn about it in American history all the time. Nothing? No? Uh, like one that we eat a lot? We eat it all the time. It's like a big thing that we eat all the time. No? Corn. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Corn, yes. That's very good. Very good. Corn uh, started in what we consider like Mexico, Central America, Peru, those areas. That's where corn comes from. And it's like one of a big staple. All right. Well, that's it on that. But I do want to talk to you guys about a few things. So we, uh, it talked about China. Um, it talked about the different re regions in the world that developed farming independently. So if you're in Africa, it was mostly like barley, wheat, stuff like that, right? So what would you think China would have? What's a staple crop in China probably? It's popular, they still eat it now. Rice, yes. Rice, uh, a grain called mallet, which is like a cereal grain, just like rice, wheat, and all that type of stuff. So cereal grains are more sustainable. They last a long period of time. And that's why we started cultivating those first because you can store them and they don't go bad quickly. Um, and then the, you can turn them into different things like flour, meal, just a bunch of different things you can make out of them. And so that helped the development of our, like our food systems and stuff like that. And a lot of it could also, we could use the, the clippings of the wheat, the cereal grasses to also feed domesticated animals, um, which in turn, it's more food. Like uh, if you have sheep, that's more wool, stuff like that. So grazing animals, cows, stuff like that would eat this wheat grass. So that's always one thing. All right, I had one more thing. So do you think, question, if you have developing of villages, stuff like that, would this lead to more conflict? Probably. Why do you think so? Well, I would agree. I mean, that's kind of a, the motto of the human race right lately. Um, 
But if you look at it, if you have a large portion of food, right? What does that have? What does that help create? What does that create when you start developing a stockpile of something of wealth? What does that start creating? Competition. I heard competition. So it's a competition. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I, <laughs> so if you have competition, then that means there's some type of what power struggle, right? Some type of power struggle. What does that create? Social classes, wealth, conflict. You get to start these chieftains. You get an actual like governmental system. I mean, there was governmental systems, but this starts developing into governmental system. How do you think math, like math was created? Because you have to keep track of all this stuff you have. So we'll get more into this uh, tomorrow about the kind of the cause and effects of, of the agricultural revolution on the human race going into um, civilization because it caused a lot of things that we never had a problem with, but now we have to keep track of things. So writing was developed. You have different languages developed. You have math and you have trade systems. You have, there's a bunch of things that came out of the agricultural revolution that we still see today and they're very important. And that is it. That's all I got for y'all. Huh? You guys do have a quiz, and it should be posted. I'm not going to agree with you guys this time. I'm sorry. You guys got it. What am I going to do now? You just want me to stop sharing it? Or keep it open? Yeah, that's the quiz from the site. Make sure you go on your Canvas, log on to chapter one, section two, quiz, complete the comment, and that'll be it. All right. Yeah, so everybody just log on to Canvas, go to your assignment, and uh, do the quiz, and that should be all you really need to do for that. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. So if we ask questions, could you answer the questions? I, I, could, I could help you.